Hello and welcome to Ashes Pathfinders, your dedicated and trusted source for all things Ashes of Creation. I am your host, C. Morgan. I'm joined today by Pathfinders. Daedalus, welcome back, buddy. Howdy. Also, welcome back, Pasha. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. And Wondering Miss with a big smile on his face. <laughs> I always have the smiles. Good <laughs> evening, everybody. Oh, man. How's it going? Yeah, it's going pretty good over here. I mean, it's nice and toasty. So everybody, I we've all kind of had a discussion. We're gonna try to try to get this episode done a little little bit shorter than they have been. We usually get done about an hour and a half in, roughly. Well, sometimes a little longer. Um, but there's been a lot going on in the Ashes of Creation community this weekend. We have a whole set of discussion points talking about the leader of men, or to be a leader of men. But also speaking of a leader. Of this community, Stephen Sharif was like making some rounds this weekend, like literally in the past 24 hours. Yeah. He has essentially touched base with three of the largest content creators that are on Twitch or just stream content like Shroud and Summit. Yesterday, we're on Summit's channel, and Stephen jumped on board and basically had a conversation there. And then today, not even what it, I think it ended like an hour ago or something. Yeah, about that. He yeah. was on Asmongold's stream chatting all nonchalantly while driving to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Do we even know why he was going to Vegas? I don't know. No idea. <laughs> what a baller, man. Okay. Right? Like, anyway, I don't know how much you all caught. Now, just as a to preface everything, today's conversation is really focused around discussions around you know being a leader being a follower having a role in an mmorpg and the one that will be meaningful for all of us here in ashes of creation but you know i, I gotta say man I, I caught most of yesterday and i caught only a bit of today so to preface this week you will see some notes being taken we've already got some people some pathfinders some ashes fam peeps that are like already right now getting the documentation for yesterday and today's interviews that Steven had. So you'll be seeing that somewhere in the community. Definitely you'll be seeing that here in this community at the very latest by next episode, we'll probably go through all the discussion points, some of which was kind of repetitive to a lot of us who have followed the game for a long time, but there were definite drops of new information that any of you catch information you found that was new. That was new. Um, not yeah. really. Oh, look at all the people following not, not, not from there, what I've seen. There was, but I can't for the life of me remember. It's just, it's all blown together. I need to go back and rewatch the, the VODs. Mm -hmm. By the power of the internet, yeah. we have access to VODs that we can watch at any time. <laughs> it is a miracle. It's just great, yeah. Yeah, the uh, sad part of watching a VOD on Twitch, though, is you're literally going to sit there through a bazillion freaking... I've done this. We did this with the one of the most recent Ashes of Creation live streams. We went back and watched it here and took notes for the Pathfinder show. I think it was the last one. And I literally sat like through a freaking ad like every, what was it, like every 15 minutes or 20 minutes. We yeah. did it. I was like, dude, oh my God. I'm so glad they're putting this on YouTube. So um, I'm welcome, man. I know. I try, I, I try not to do that though because I understand as a creator how that actually is beneficial oh, absolutely and so i try not to do that because when i watch other people plus it like anyway yeah so it, i reconsider it often when that happens but what were some main takeaways if you caught anything i've got a couple i want to make sure you all have a chance to kind of chat about any of that though so for me it's mostly about obviously Stephen makes a fantastic impression mm-hmm on everybody like right. his passion and enthusiasm for the genre and the game that he's making it just speaks on so many levels yeah, so many people and uh, i after because I, I was watching uh asman goldstream when he was doing the interview with stephen mm -hmm. and after stephen logged off and they were sort and then asman gold and his friend were just chatting together one of the first things he said was this guy gets it Stephen understands. He understands the players, understands the community and what we've gone through. And I think that's the most important thing. It, it's He's very relatable. 
which I don't think you you listen to just as an example. Uh, there was a recent interview with Ian Hussacostas, who is the lead developer on World of Warcraft. Right. He recently did an interview uh, with a content creator, and it was completely different. It, and, um, Ian was so... I'm not not to sort of bash on him, but he was so clinical and cold and 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 all of this. And then you see Stephen, and he's so much more approachable and relatable as not only a developer but as a player. And I think that's what uh, is bringing people in right now so much. I in in terms of those game other gaming communities. Yeah, I would echo that because I um. I was at, I can't remember what conference it was. It might have been PAX, and I actually saw Ian Hasakosis in person speaking. And he's extremely smart guy, yeah. really, but he was very analytical. And he was very to the point and very buttoned, whereas Stephen is very passionate. He's very sincere, I mean, even just from the first video I saw, like, right before Kickstarter began, I was like, wow, I had that same thought. This guy gets it. So, yeah, it was, it's it's really good to see, you know, as much as he hustled with all these, like, different content creators, he got a lot of good exposure and good yeah. feedback. I mean, Peon had that video, of, you know, mm -hmm. 25, 30 minutes. It went through, and he invested quite a bit of time in, you know, knowing how, you know, much he, you know, covers all different types of content. The fact that he devoted, what was it, like 35, 35 hours? 35 hours, man, and I believe it. Yeah. If you've made a yeah, video like that, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, would, I would totally agree. I mean, Steven definitely made a great showing. He's, you know, a very energetic guy and he's going to bring a lot of people in yeah definitely and he adapted to the audience too uh for those who caught the asmund gold uh interview he had with him uh it was um, steven's attitude was much different than the one that we saw on the official ashes creation streams uh during the ashes creation streams steven like he's always uh he always seems as approachable no matter where he is um but during the official streams, you know, he's a lot more professional and a lot more PG-13 in, like, his way of yeah, talking. And during the Asmongold's uh, interview, since it's a lot more laid-back kind of, uh, like, uh, no-bullshit kind of community, right? Uh, he got a lot more familiar in his vocabulary, and, like, it worked. Like, it worked mm -hmm. really well. I remember after the interview, Asman Gold was talking to McConnell, and McConnell and Asman was talk were like super happy about the fact that Steven was, you know, using slurs and all that stuff just to like it, it, it made it made him seem even more approachable, less of a politician slash corporate goon than anything else. Yeah. Which I think was a was a great idea. It was a great a, a great move on Steven's part. <laughs> I'm doing so good at not taking the bait in chat. I love you guys in chat. I really do, man. <laughs> I really do. You know what the best part for me was, though, is I have, you know, I'm I, I don't, I'm not going to say I, I don't do this professionally. There's a lot of people that do. There's a lot of people that have been doing it a lot longer than me, more successfully than me. But I've got I've got my share of being in, in the development fold of, like, other games over time, or both as, like, someone who creates content supports it or also as somebody who's just like waiting for the game passionately and i've experienced a lot of people in the position that steven's in that have you yeah. know gone gone up there and had to be asked questions kind of on the fly and it's very rarely that someone can just rattle off the information like that you know yeah. both both like you know directly but also like elaborating in depth and the most important part is you see his passion you see his passion. Definitely. Um, honestly, it's going to sound weird, the word I'm going to use, but Steven is so close to Ashes of Creation, uh, to that franchise, that it's almost like he talks about it almost in a romantic way, mm. where he, it's, it's not like he learned the topic by heart. 
it's more like he's speaking from the heart and it's just something that is always always on his mind he's always thinking about it he's always like figuring out what the next step is going to be to like bring that project to life and it shows when he talks about it because there's no hesitation whenever he talks about ashes of creation it just comes out it's clear sometimes it's not necessarily what he wanted to say but like it just comes out and that's one of the things that make that project so so um interesting for a lot of for like a, a lot of people who never heard about the game is that uh wood chip you said in chat like uh, <laughs> i think uh it's you wood chip in the chat who said that on the ash creation discord uh steven could sell ice cubes to eskimos like as long as he believes in the project steven's an amazing salesman because he's mm -hmm. he says all the, like he checks all the boxes for what mm -hmm. right thing to say and tbh like it it heckin shows like that mm -hmm. guy like there's no practice necessarily in what he says it's all about believing in his own project yeah i mean it doesn't ever sound like a marketing pitch like even the like the pre you know the pre kickstarter video it, you could just see the joy that he had talking about what he was doing and it's even i mean i know we've had a lot of varying communication over the past you know couple of years since kickstarter but now that it's really kicking into higher gear again a lot of what you know the core community has really loved about what steven kind of brought to the table it's mm -hmm. coming back it's coming back to a much bigger audience and i definitely see this being another catalyst like kickstarter was i mean just look at how much they raise in kickstarter with just you know a little bit of you know passion right well i would say a little a lot of passion <laughs> from from steven right and and now you're reaching tens of thousands of people in a weekend that now yeah. they're you know like a hundred thousand people yeah 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 <laughs> so he definitely knows how to choose his forums that is definitely for sure mm -hmm. yeah the other thing uh you know i just think that's important is like he i don't know man like he just put that in front of a lot of people like i don't I don't think people like truly like recognize just how big of a deal that is because you're talking about some of the biggest streamers in the world. Like mm -hmm. regardless of how many people are watching that live, this is the thing they're networked with other really large creators. They're in that top 1% echelon of people that have a crazy viewer base and like audience. Right. So just getting it out there. So people even know that that game exists is a big deal so i mean that's just like big freaking yeah you know as, as somebody you know who i mean obviously this is his passion project he spent his life working and becoming wealthy and then he's dumping his wealth into his passion which is mmorpgs like a you know a game that really delivers that a lot of people have been you know waiting for and he's going out there and he of course he's got his own investment you know, to look out for, but also like he's going out there and doing it. He's just jumping on it. The guy lives and breathes it. And, you know, I mean, a lot of respect for that. And uh, I think it's going to be good for the community just because overall you're going to get more people talking about it. And, and with this type of a game, like word of mouth is, is so much, it's so valuable, you know, because a lot of people will go and they'll sh share their experiences. They'll talk about a game and whether it's positive or not, like they're going to, they're going to, a lot of people are going to check it out for themselves or at least look. But aside from that, you know, if you have a lot of people who are, who get a positive perspective and they can share that, I mean, that's like, you know, there's no, no amount of money you can put on that in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go on ahead and take the shift here and over the next week, we're going to definitely gather our bullet points. We're going to gather all of the new information that will be shared somewhere within the ashes of community. So no worries. We're totally going to get that on tap for y'all. We'll definitely uh, touch base on that next time, but let's talk a little bit more about the experience, right? It was a very big weekend this weekend, but there was a lot of really engaging conversation in the community. We were talking about the balance of being a leader 
and being a follower, like what for you all, right? For all of you here on the cast and, and for all of you in chat, whether you're listening to this later or, or you're reading over it now uh, in chat, like share your experiences. What to you makes your role meaningful, you know, and do you have your own perception of what it means to be a, a leader versus a follower? Big question, but you know, go. Wow, dude. Uh, okay. Big questions indeed. Can you give me like a week to think about it? I'll get back to you on that. You can just pick a part, you know, you can just pick a yeah. piece. We'll start yeah, with I'll, a piece. I mean, I'll, I'll text you. So, <laughs> In terms of roles, are we talking like the Holy Trinity? Is that the roles Ooh. they mean? Or are we talking... Yeah, I like, think... You say roles, and then you say leader follower. Yeah, but... think more of like player roles. Player roles. Like, in a community. Like, whether okay. you're okay. whether you're like a leader, or whether you're a follower. Okay. And then we're going to branch off and talk about that, ext- expanding into potentially like, you know, guilds or node leadership. Mm-hmm. So... For me, uh, I've spent some time raid leading, and when I was when I first, I kind of dropped into raid leading, as it were, because I'm the kind of person who I'm fine with letting somebody else do it, but if they're not doing it properly, then I will step in, and I'll do it, and that sort of happened. So I kind of dropped into raid leading because nobody else would do it, and when I was very new to raid leading, one of the f- things that I learned early on was learning to listen even though you're leading you don't know everything and i feel like this is so important if anyone who's looking to get into raid leading you do not know everything you do not know all the classes you do not know all the specs you don't know what everything is capable of and you need to have the confidence to go to your raiders and say I don't know much about your particular class. Tell me what you can do. What can you do in this fight to make our job easier? And you sort of, you need to be able to pull these resources in from all these different angles and then use all that information to make a decision. And I think that is really important for a leading role. Yeah, I would echo that. Um, I've had many different experiences in terms of MMOs and people raid leading. I've taken a stab at it. I'm going to be honest with you. It's not my preference. I'm still the kind of person that will give feedback, you know, and suggestions if they're asked for. I don't necessarily, um, you know, I don't volunteer my opinion without being asked. But but I would have to say one thing that sets, uh, I would say, my current raid leader apart from others in a really good way is he is very much the student. Um, exactly what you said, Miss, is he makes sure he knows and tries all the different classes um, and he gains an understanding of what they can do. And I'm honestly pretty surprised whenever we're in an encounter and he knows exactly what type of abilities might work here or there and gets people kind of lined up with that. So I feel like you know, somebody, again, that's always learning and doesn't necessarily, um, doesn't necessarily, like, pigeonhole themselves in terms of their knowledge, that's successful as a leader, I think. Um, And that, to me, you know, speaks very well of somebody who is leading is the fact that they're willing to learn and try things and, you know, make sure they're not, you know, they don't put them for themselves forward as an expert because they know um, their team is going to provide them with information when they don't, you know, they don't know the answer. So I think it's somebody that's very collaborative, and very much a student. Yeah. I got to say thank you to gold Metro and chat for the, uh, the five gifted subs. I really appreciate that. Thank you very mm-hmm. much. Thanks for all the follows everybody. Welcome to the community too. Um, I want to touch on a couple points in chat here, right? So I'm seeing some people talking about, you know, I like to lead. It's coming from Muffin, right? I like to lead as and organize the party and allocate resources, right? I also like to lead the big PvP realm battles, like in Warhammer Online, uh, which was also a lot about communicating, right? And you hear that word, communication, right? Mm-hmm. And I agree. Like, this is a thing. you, I think an element to any good leader, and this is just from, from my own perspective, is being able to delegate 
that's also an element, right? Because the one area that I have always considered a weakness of mine as a leader for raid leading, etc. Which, by the way, TL, I'll have you know, as a raid leader, my characters are never the smallest ones in the group. <laughs> just, just saying. Okay. <laughs> just saying. You know, you're not the, the lone warrior in the front lines. No. <laughs> no, because I create alts for that, like my my mage in World of Warcraft, who I named Punthus. <laughs> But to nice. be but to be fair, I love <laughs> I love I love the little guy thoroughly. But I would never raid lead with him for on on principle. I just can't. But mm. you know. Um, but you know the thing is, I always consider it. Uh, do it. Um, no, <laughs> you can't buy me. No, 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 <laughs> no. <sure>? Yes, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> not no. Hell no. All right. <laughs> So, you know what, though, man? Like, and the I'm thing gonna is. I'm going to make you a dwarf. No. I'm going to hack your account on Ashes. I'm going to make you a dwarf. So, if uh, that happens, well, yeah. we have evidence to, to provide to the uh, yeah, people. We already have a suspect. Look, but to be fair, like, look, Stephen was here in chat on the Ashes of Creation account, what, two weeks, three weeks ago, or whatever? And I told yeah. him that I was the one that, that looted the, the main corpse in the PI test. And he was like, I'm going to beat that ass. And then he talked about how, mm-hmm. like, if the game launches and I can't loot, we should just launch the game with me being able to unable to loot. So I mean, you know, <laughs> well, I, I mean, I think that's a that's a good deal, honestly. People are always out to get me, man. It, it's not <laughs> paranoia if they're really out to get you. Just saying. <laughs> it's not paranoia if they're right. <laughs> just we just joke, man. We joke here, but I am going to say this though: the thing that I've always found that over time I've learned as a leader is I remember all I want to say was like way probably back 2010, you know, I was at the precipice of leadership and I was like doing raid leading and I was tanking of course. And I was doing my thing and I found that like, you know, you can't be too nice, you know, because if you're too nice, then people they'll, they'll talk over each other. They won't really let you talk. You can't have the floor and comms, you know, but then if you're too firm, you're, you're kind of being a dick, you know, you're not really being very nice to people, you know, tell them to shut up and stuff. And you see, I've seen people to operate in both areas and I've seen like the, you know, the, the issues that you have. Right. And I feel like, you know, you can be very, you gotta be very direct. You definitely have got to know your stuff. Right. Yeah, exactly. Muffin. You gotta be firm, but approachable. Like, right. When you come from a place of like, this isn't to be disrespectful, but during this period of time, this is the way we've got to operate. You know, you can control, comms a bit too uh but for me i my weakness as a leader was i gotta delegate if i'm not delegating i'm taking so much on my own shoulders and it becomes taxing and that translates into not only how you interact with people but also with what's happening in chat oh (laughs) we got another hype chain wow okay holy wait (laughs) the hell just happened dude uh someone to take over whoa wait (laughs) hi hi Thank you so oh. much to Woodship. To whoa, there's like the way more stuff going on here than I realized. Holy crap, you guys! Uh, yeah, so we got subs gifted from Woodship. We got two of them: one to geez. Dark Meat, one to Muffin. We got Garrist one two three uh, who subbed at tier one. Thank you so much for that. And of course, we got Gold Mecro who gifted five uh, five subs. Uh, and five, we just got five. Gold Mecro oh, who no. just gifted another ten. And oh, another ten, <laughs> and he's still going. And we got three hundred bits given by Artillery Three D. You guys are completely okay. insane. I'm taking over Sim because you you just gave him a stroke. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Quick okay. recovery. Throw your hands up. <laughs> Yo, uh, dear <laughs> Lord. Uh, just want to say, champions, man. You guys, seriously. I have oh shit. <laughs> and the denim and, and the denim's action. giving twenty oh tier God, one dude, subs to Simmer's community. And Denim's have has given two hundred and three subs to the uh Right. The chat total with a wood chip with uh sixty nine gift subs and gold mecro who now stands at twenty five in the channel. Uh 
so I guess all I have to say is this is the segment of our show where the community takes over, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> And just, another holy. 10 from Woodship. Thank you so much, Woodship. You guys are amazing. I feel like we're in an auction right now. It's the buy sim self esteem. <laughs> like, <laughs> seriously, you all, man, Woodship, Adeniums, like Gold Mecro, anybody who's followed or cheered, Adeniums uh, with the bits. Like, seriously, all of you guys, artillery with the bits. I don't have the expelli. Jesus. Gold <laughs> Mecro just gave another 10 for a total of 35 in the past 10 minutes. What Cheryl <laughs> said. So if you're new to the channel, definitely join our Discord. You can share in the community questions for oh Holy. Oh my Christ. goodness. <laughs> I really try not to cuss, but stuff like this makes it tough for me not to drop an F-bomb here or there. Jesus, you guys. Hey. Yeah. Holy shit. Oh, <laughs> hey. you guys are awesome. You all are truly leaders, man. Yeah. I'm telling you, you guys Artillery are amazing. Artillery with another 300 and the Deniums with another 20. You guys are just f crazy. Right? I, I think they're trying to outdo themselves on the, from the last hype chain. Like, I don't yeah, know. Did get on the last one? Jeez, I don't remember. 1400% <laughs> level 5 hype train. Um, so, yeah, we beat the last one. I, Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, this podcast got derailed very quickly. Well done, uh, chat. Well done, I, guys. I leave these in the I leave these in the pod podcast audio and video too because you know why? Because you don't you won't understand how fun or like what this is like unless you're actually here and see everybody in chat. <laughs> All I have to say is honestly, you guys seriously honor me, man. You honor this, this podcast. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. The true rev coming in hot with 10,000 bits. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Jeez. I just uh, had to check how much that counts. <laughs> that, that costs. I'm like, Oh, Oh, you guys are just crazy. Wow, man. Seriously, I thank you. Thank you for that all that support, you guys. Seriously. This is officially the highest sub count I've ever had in my entire eight. Almost well, actually. Yeah. What? Oh my god. Is it nine years on Twitch now? This July. Yeah. Dang. Right? Yeah. Or is it eight years? I don't even know, man. It was 2012, but thank you so much for all the support. You seriously honor like me you honor this show and everybody here by honestly just being here and that is a massive just over the top level of support i don't ever expect from anybody seriously i just want you to know that you being here and just being part of this is like seriously more than i could ever hope for so and i'm not gonna dance and sing no because i still can't be by it okay thank you <laughs> but, but you guys are you guys seriously are amazing dude 17 27 percent 1727 percent seconds to go i still don't understand what that means but i mean jesus you guys are amazing seriously emotes forget the emotes thank you so much everybody so where were we at uh i remember it being about uh, that we're talking about some mmorpg i don't know man okay <laughs> i would just like Thank Going you very on much. Tangent, just a touch. You asked at the beginning if there's anything noticeable that we heard from the things. There was actually yeah. something that I just remembered. Thank you, Cheryl. Which was um, Stephen was talking to Asmund Gold about uh, active game masters and sort of trying to start oh, yeah. real uh, world transactions of money. A gold such. trade. Yeah, gold selling yeah. and GM. And yeah, and I can't remember the exact details, but he did say there is a system in place to basically it um, evaluate player behavior. So yeah. if, for example, somebody gets an item just really randomly, and you're not quite, sh and the system doesn't know where the item came from, then it would be a. <laughs> He's still um, going. Gold He's Macro still going. just donated 10 tier 1 subs. Are you serious? Jesus Christ, you guys. <laughs> I mean, thank you, but also, like... <laughs> poor, poor Sim. He's going to have a heart attack. I made those says. emotes myself, all of the channel ones. I just want to say that. So, you know, hammer with love, baby. 
Yeah, please continue though, Mist. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, so I, yeah, this uh, sort of uh, behave, player behavioral system. So if somebody gets like a, a random item and you're not quite sure where it came from, or the system doesn't know where it came from, uh, it will basically backtrack. And if it uh, is backtracked to like a suspicious account or an account that's being flagged for botting or whatever, then they can sort of nip that in the bud. And I think that's, uh, if it works, I think that would be a really good system to have as on top of the active GMs that they plan to have on every server as well. Yeah, I think that's a, a very good thing to have. Yeah, uh, on top of that, for the gold selling, like he did bring up a few a few good points, like from the get go before we even get into the uh, their program, like their analysis program that they want to use. Did say like the game will take a while to level up through. First of all, like a long while, you can't grind to it in two days. Uh, and he right. said it is a sub based game, so you add those two on top of each other and. You have some. You have a game that the gold farmers will have to pay for monthly to have access to, and then you have to level up to make, like, to, to make enough gold to actually compete. And then if you turn on bot mode, then you get banned by the uh, by the analysis program. So it's like there's probably going to be still like gold selling. There's some in every game, but oh, yeah, there will be. But Absolutely. like it's like he brought up some really really good points, and for the GMs that he said like having at least one GM twenty four seven online on the servers, that's going to be extremely extremely good. Yeah. Like, I, rem I remember in like uh, my first days in World of Warcraft when like I had an issue, and at the time they really really relied on their GMs to help the player base. Uh, not much like not as much today. Um, but I remember like I was just like having an issue. And it was not even an issue. Like, it was just something that they could have done on my account directly. But, like, the GM just teleported to me in World of Warcraft. And, like, I saw him in his, like, purple robe or something. And, like, he had the GM in front of his name. And he just started chatting with me in, like, say chat, just, like, in local chat. And he was helping out. And honestly, like, it feels really good for the players to see that the, that the staff is there for them. Yes. That they're not just someone way far in the distance just doing his thing and not even replying to a request still do like still doing what you ask them to do but not even replying you're just going to see a change in your account mm -hmm. the guy comes in front of your face and he actually does it it's really nice so i think it's a great idea to stay close to the community if you have your gms online mm -hmm. yeah and i was going to read something too from chat right here by the way muffin thank you so much for that gifted sub too man really appreciate all of you uh rev that was that was nuts you guys are all crazy and but in the most amazing way uh fupo i wanted to read your comment he said there's a lot more to the back end that they have not let on about now that i'm hearing more details from the streams one of the most revolutionary things about aoc might just possibly be the back end itself and I'm very interested in the details man you know the future man as we move forward the more that we actually get like you know firsthand information about like real knowledge about because there's so much that they have to keep close to the chest you know one of the things i actually noticed a lot about in chat was kind of talking about lore people were like what's the lore what's the story well that you're not going to get a lot of that like even steven's like talked about that over and over that is a, a big part of that you're going to have to get in the game itself and that's the beautiful thing about each server is that essentially and to anyone who's new to ashes like this is the thing i want you to hear if you're first time here on like paying attention to the show watching listening to it later is the thing that that always caught my attention about this game that i have been so excited about is each server because of the way that it can develop like you've got the same world right we're all working in the same uh cutout of a universe right but it's literally going to be like an alternate reality between each of them because of the fact that each server can evolve differently. So you could have a whole different set of circumstances. Like you could have a different world boss, right? A set of world bosses that exist because of the way the nodes developed on one versus another, or the story and the narrative for that server could potentially unfold differently than it would from one server to the next. Because, you know, if one node on server a 
develops and it ends up being economic node and another server on server B ends up being a military node. And they were like somewhere in close proximity, like that, you know, five, what five zone of influences, right? Between the five major metropolises. Mm -hmm. yep. And, and mm -hmm. that's what we're talking about. So now you're talking about a fifth of the world that has a completely different dynamic just because one of that one metropolis that leveled up instead of another in some similar area. I mean, the, I, and how many nodes do we, are there going to actually be? We don't know yet. Specifically, uh, over a hundred. Over a hundred, like a hundred different nodes. Right. So, like, so like, think about that. Let's just go with a hundred. Let's just say, a, let's say at minimum a hundred. Right. Imagine a hundred nodes in a four hundred eighty kilometer world. Right. One hundred three nodes. Thank you, Wembley. Let's say, let's say a hundred three nodes in a four hundred eighty square kilometer world at launch. Okay. And only five become a metropolis that's a lot of variation of possibilities for sure man. yeah that's crazy so getting back to the leadership part that means five <laughs> five people a conversation 15 minutes ago <laughs> yeah we're gonna shift back because now we're talking about the leaders of men well that's not only a backer level to the kickstarter the leaders of you know with the big point people are like are this flag going to be in the game for a select few people, very select few people. And some of those are going to be the people that run a node, the mayor of a metropolis, five, right? Then you've got the castles and everything else too, the, all the other potential, like the eggs and things like that that you can look at. But the true leaders on each server, the, the top tier, right, are the people that run a metropolis. Because guilds, yeah, they're important and, and possibly... You know, guilds are going to be the ones kind of also running uh, a metropolis. But I mean, there's also a potential that it could be somebody, <laughs> somebody different, somebody who's running solo. It's possible. I feel like you're going to have the higher, higher likelihood if what just happened, huh? I don't know. I don't okay, know. that was weird. I just got a bits. <laughs> I got a bit notification sound in my ear, but I don't see anything going on. I think it's broken <laughs> Twitch or whatever. It's like, <laughs> it's damn, Twitch, damn it, chat, you net code Twitch. is just completely broken yeah. right now. <laughs> so you think about like leadership. Yeah. We've talked about, um, you know, leadership, uh, being a leader and a follower, right? Like, yeah. How is it? How is it? How do you feel like this game is going to allow a person's experience to be meaningful if they're competitive. This is kind of a just a side question to all of this, right? This is one thing that mm -hmm. I think is important to the person that maybe can't dedicate the kind of time, right? Maybe they can dedicate, like, you know what I mean? The person that can't make playing an MMO their job, right? The thing yeah. that's come to my attention a few times over, you know, the years has been, well, what if I'm investing a lot of time you know, but I don't have that really massive guild and I'm not the leader of that really massive guild. Right. And I'm just mm -hmm. somebody that's in the guild. Like how is my role in the game going to be meaningful? Like if I want to be the best, what, okay. you know what I mean? Like what's my cut out of space? that's still going to be, make me feel like I'm super important for someone working hard in the game. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I think we talked about that kind of general topic uh, quite a few times. And I think uh, the reason we talked about it often is because it's a very important topic. Yeah. There's, uh, there's always multi there are like different populations in MMO. We got the casual, the casual gamers, the hardcore gamers, and everyone everywhere in between. Um, <clears throat> I think people have to like have to kind of like control their expectations um mm -hmm. i have a full-time job that normally would be like 40 hours a week uh realistically it's more around 80 and i would love to be a leader like i used to be in an mmorpg when i had the time when i was just in school when i was in high school heck like in high school like as soon as you get home you go on your computer you play until you go to bed right but right. I don't have the time to do that. Uh, not anymore. And I set my expectations to be, it used to be being a leader, learning the mechanics of everything, uh, 
joining a big guild, rising up in the ranks until I'm until they trust me, and then and then like continue on like that and like lead raids. But the thing is, like, I can't do that anymore, and I don't expect that from a, I don't expect the game to give like to hand that to me. The reason being, and I think I think it's normal that we do that. It's because yeah, adult blows wood chip. I was gonna read like, that. I, I, I think the reason why we should like, you know, control our expectations like that is because if a game gives everyone the opportunity to be a leader, the game is the game is just going to be bad. Because if everyone can do anything, nobody's special. And nobody will ever feel special no matter what. Mm -hmm. Like you need your no lifers in an MMO to be your leaders and you need your casuals who are respectful and listen to be your raid members mm -hmm. like we all have a spot that we can fit in but we you just need to like manage your expectations and the game can't revolve around pleasing all of its player base it has to give a structure that is enjoyable and the players need mm -hmm. to adapt to that structure not the other way around that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. well, I think that's yeah. important too, because you have to think about the fact that there are, there's a lot of ways in this game specifically that you can really stand out as a leader without running a metropolis or, or a keep essentially in the game. There's a lot. That's like part of the, one of the main pillars is that, especially when you think about things like commerce, you think about uh, caravans, you know, uh, also talked about, uh, Iskru talked about here. You can also be relied on for other things. A metropolis doesn't work without the people running it. Nodes need a certain XP marker for it to, uh, to make, to keep its status. So it slowly, uh, will dissipate. All right. And Faisal, what up, buddy? Couldn't make it today, but he's here in chat. Um, Hey, what's up, Faisal? Yeah. And he said, you know, it's the thing to think about too, is like, there's also like a, what, one month? re-election period yeah all right yeah so yeah, 30 days 30 days so you have another opportunity you know to work hard you know i think about something like and i'm just going to use this as an example i i used to feel like in the elder scrolls online getting emperor was <clears throat> i guess this is just going to be my perspective on if you want to grind really hard to get there the cool thing about this is like, I, I I don't know, maybe maybe people disagree with me, but when, when The Elder Scrolls Online launched, that particular game for me, getting Emperor, was the pinnacle of success I as I perceived it. Again, like Pacha said, expectations, also a bit of perception, right? What do you what do you perceive? And to me, yeah. my perception of excelling was becoming an emperor because that is it was at launch the most prestigious title that you could get. Or, or position that you could achieve. Now, I don't know. I think maybe now, depending on what your your perspective is, maybe getting God Slayer in that game, doing trials and actually achieving that would be like maybe what you would consider, right, for your pinnacle of success because maybe you don't care about PvP. Maybe you really care mm -hmm. about raiding. Um, to another person in that game specifically, uh, it might be trade. And so maybe having the best guild, uh, what is it called? Uh, the merchant, the guild merchant for the week, maintaining and holding the, the best guild merchant in the best position. Maybe that's their end game. Yeah. Maybe that's their end game. So for me, the thing that happened in the Elder Scrolls online was emperor. I got it. I achieved it. But you know what? Part of the reason was I wanted that achievement was the, the passives. It was those emperor passives. It was, and I did it alone. And then, you know what happened later? I took it away. Yep. And then you gave got the former emperor title instead. I mean, there's just ESO, you know, where in Ashes of Creation conflict matters. Well, ESO it doesn't. Yeah, you're gonna be an, you're gonna be emperor for literally 34 seconds before the next emperor takes over. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. You know what the cool idea is around becoming like a a, a, a node mayor is you could work really hard. Like maybe you had worked equivalency of the kind of like work that went into grinding to become an emperor, which was a lot, a lot of work. I'm not going to downplay that. That was a, that was out of an MMORPG. 
that was probably the most difficult grind I've ever had. It was really freaking tough to do it alone. Like, and a lot of people don't do it alone. And alone, it was exhausting. It was very little sleep. <laughs> but in in Ashes of Creation, I view that as to me, from from my perspective, again, perspective and goals, yeah. that would be what I would consider the equivalent of maybe that success for me. If I was to become the leader of a node, even if I just did it once, I would consider that like a massive accomplishment. But the thing that's really interesting from my perspective, again, about that leadership position of being a, a node mayor is the responsibility that actually will come with that. I feel like is actually, to me, meaningful on so many different levels. Right, because you make decisions yeah. that really are going to impact that entire fifth, and then you know also the whole server because you know you you're responsible for that fifth. But how's that going to play in politically to trade and all these other dynamics in the world? So that one month that you could be in that position could be a pretty meaningful month, you know. And it's almost like a person's reign, right? Well, when they reign, they were they. I almost like think of it too, like from that, you know, if you're like a king, were you a just king? Were you a just leader? Were you a, a tyrant? You know, did you do good for the server? Did you do something bad? So when I think of being a leader in Ashes, I think about how much more that could potentially mean. And there's so many layers to that that we still have yet to see. But even at this point in time in the game's development, from my perspective, again, it seems like it'll be very a very big impact on the overall world. So, Yeah. You know, every Sunday we talk about Ash's creation for like an hour to two hours sometimes. And I feel like earlier today on Asmongold's stream after Steven's interview, mm -hmm. McConnell, uh, basically Asmund, Asmongold's stream partner, kind of like said something that is so, so true. And I feel like we all feel that inside McConnell, like, I don't think he was following Ash's creation that much. Mm -hmm. So when they had the interview, it's like he was you know, learning about it kind of the first time, for the first time. And, like, out of nowhere, he was like, I'm so sad. Like, why are you sad? It's like, because I want this game to be good. <laughs> I, want, I want to stop playing World of Warcraft. I want to play that. <laughs> that's kind of how i feel every sunday as soon as we as soon as we do that podcast <laughs> you know I'm with you man can i i want to share a lull i didn't get to watch all of that today because i had other stuff going yeah. on i'm gonna go back but i gotta tell you guys i was actually kind of inside giggling my ass off because he was 71k viewers and he's talking to the creative director of ashes of creation in the World of Warcraft category. Yeah. It was pretty good. <laughs> hey man, MMO promotion right there. You can't you can't yeah. You can't downplay that. But that's that was that was good to see, man. I didn't I didn't catch that part, but yeah. For sure. I mean it, it was just an overall great great interview, great stream. Props mm -hmm. to Steven, props to Asman Gold for putting that on. And yeah, really, really cool. Um, mm -hmm. going back to the issue of mayorship, etc. I've seen quite a few comments on various videos basically saying, oh, so the being the mayor is such a great thing. I honestly don't think it is. I don't want to be a mayor. A no, work, I don't either. Yeah, I can't imagine I... anything worse. <laughs> like, the it's only a second job. The, yeah, it is. The, You're not the paid. benefit... Is Wait, it's the... literally slavery. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. I mean, the only real tangible benefit you get out of being a mayor is uh, the potential of getting a flying mount for a limited amount of time. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. literally it. And for the amount of shit that you're going to have to go through, for the amount of hoops that you're going to have to go through, in the mount Wait, is it worth it? Through, yeah. Yeah, it's. True. I'd say that yeah. that's compensation almost. Like people, are, I yeah. know a lot of people are like going, "Oh, flying mounts for the privileged and all of this." No, you clearly you don't understand what 
it takes yeah. to be a man. Like you almost need a bachelor's <laughs> degree in management to like manage a goddamn metropolis. <laughs> but, but I got a dragon for five days. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I went to school so I can so I can lead and actually the creation, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm t- oh, if, if you if somebody actually becomes a mayor in Apple and then puts it on their resume. I mean, you know, everybody can make a career out of games. Like, I don't know if you guys remember the big uh, the big guild curse gaming in World of Warcraft a long time ago. And they were like, you know, one I think one of the best game, guilds in the world for PvE for raids. They and way back now, when. yeah, way back when. And they've been, they were bought. Like, they were actually, like, they started a company called Curse Gaming. And now they have a client, like they've been bought out for, I think for a resource management software for games for like guides and Minecraft add-ons and ESO add-ons and all of that. Like yeah, they made like, quite a bit of money out of that. Well, yeah. Like they, they've got a low team. They've got a Dota 2 team. I'm pretty sure they see like they're, they're a company they... now and like yeah. they make money and they, they started do. by being nerds. <laughs> killing pixel monsters in a video game like ain't that the dream <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> god this dude blame <laughs> Pasha he's the one he's saying the stuff it's not my fault I love don't ev- blame my words every week I, I make two to three or four clips at the most from each episode of this and went <laughs> And the other show we do on Thursdays, 5 p.m. CDT as well, right here on this channel, <laughs> called Looking for More, dedicated gamers podcast all around about what? Game development, MMORPGs, gaming culture. That's right. Check it out. That's right. I just promoted free advertisement by me. <laughs> Shameless self-promo. Hey, dude. To me, gamers. You know what, though, man? It's great because you got the place. It's like the general place to talk about stuff. And then mm-hmm. you got this one, which is like the Ashes, Ashes Fam, Ashes Pathfinder show, right? So it's great. And uh, yeah, and if you all aren't already following the uh, Twitter for the show, it's at Ashes Pathfinder. You can uh, follow there. Make sure you always catch when this goes live. You can uh, shoot us a mail. You've seen it in chat too. There's a phone number there, which is the one five three nine six six four six eight zero one. You can leave a message there for the show. Um, the Ashes Pathfinders at gmail is the uh, mailbag if you want to shoot a message there also i feel like steven kind of fast tracked my efforts you all know i'm like reworking the website to make it more ash as a creation oriented with initial content stuff i got some votes to create some like custom art assets so i'm going to be doing that probably over the next week or so that's right me making custom art assets you guys don't know it, but i do have art skills and uh i'm going to be doing that I really do, man. I actually got some really. Oh, great I stuff. I know you do. I know. Yeah. It's just the way you said it, man. Just, I'm feeling like, attacked. Oh no! I, you I, me a liar, man. Too. Dude, no one's giving me shit about the light coming off of my head today. I, I have again, <laughs> again. It's no, not Faisal isn't here. It's not. <laughs> it's so true. It's not really paranoia. I'm just saying. Oh. <laughs> No. Well, I mean, I would have, but I'm a little blinded right now, so I can't really see that. <laughs> there it is. I'm being blinded by the guy there. God, oh, I love God. it. I love it, dude. This is one of my most favorite parts of a week, dude. I'm telling you, it's beautiful. But um, wait. You know what? Why? So on on the on the stream, yeah. I think you're down my left. You have light on top of you. So there you go. Oh my god. Oh my god. Stand up the light, please. <laughs> oh, we know that's good clip, dude. It's beautiful, dude. God bless you guys. Man, what a hell of a time. So we've got to gather up all of the discussion points from yesterday and today. Um and to, to any of you that don't already know, you can hear in the Discord, it's discord.gg forward slash simorg, S-I-M-U-R-G-H. There's an Ashes Pathfinder channel specific. There's also one for Ashes of Creation where we chat, but there's one specific to this show. Um, I do post on Reddit every week uh, prior to the show. Um, I'm going to start posting, I think, in the forums a little bit ahead of time too. Um, 
I just gather questions from people. But there were some topics uh, when I talked on Friday here from uh, some people that were talking about like, you know, they're they're kind of relating to what it means to be a leader, knowing the mechanics, the roles, progression points, right? Uh, being able to kind of manage stress levels and different types of content. Woodship, who's here, also had talked about leaders are expected to be more knowledgeable, more prepared, be able to convey mechanic strategies to the group. Followers are expected to follow the directions and offer any knowledge or thoughts on the current situation. Casuals are just, well, they're just that, I guess. And uh, <laughs> what do you all think about assassination? Like that. Yeah. The casuals are just over there. Hey, man. You know what, though? <laughs> the thing that's funny, though, is like sometimes people, you know what, though? Honestly, the, the, the casuals, even in this game, even if you don't play that much, you're still contributing to the game. You know why? Because no development. You are. Basic level. Casuals, uh, casuals are an essential, an essential part of the community. Yep. To be honest, they are. Well, if I'm a they're casual they're rate so rate important. Rate. They're the ones that exactly. fill that fill the world and make the world feel alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for your questions, should they allow assassinations and coup d'état? Yeah. Uh, a coup, uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. Assassination, no. What do you all think? I agree. I think uh, a coup would be something that I mean. I think even Steven talked a yep. little bit about it at some point, mm -hmm. right? I think that mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. seems like something that would be pretty cool, right? To be able to have happen, yeah. right? Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, just flat out assassination. I think that's just yeah. Uh, that's just, I just don't see that gross. as being feasible. That's just gross. Yeah, yeah it's just gross. Like corruption? Do Is it like corruption level gross? Yeah, it's like flaming poop kind of gross where is that <laughs> on the spectrum of gross where does that from, from where is... poop to corruption what kind of <laughs> like is it a seven or, or a six i don't know man i'd start with on the on on the i would start with like at least cleanliness on one end so that there's at least something okay. close to filth you know not quite and then you get corruption in the middle in the middle and so like what? flaming poop at around <laughs> eight or nine <laughs> is this still a PG stream? <laughs> Where are we going oh man, it was again? it was like a seven. This was never right. a PG stream. Yeah, this was never PG content. Oh we just well, tried if, to... if that's the case. Then... Oh wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I take that back. I retract my previous statement. It's a PG thirteen <laughs> <Apple>. plus. <laughs> but honestly, assassination just doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, coup d'état like it does make sense. You're basically toppling toppling yes. the people uh, in power, but assassination. You can already PK people. True. So like, true. You can already do that. So like, what does it do if you, mm -hmm. like, I'm in the throne room, I'm on my throne, and you kill me? You're I just mean, PK. good for you. I'm, you're corrupted, and I'm going to respawn in 0.5 seconds and go back to my throne. Like, what does it entail? Does it mean that if someone gets PK'd in the throne room, mm -hmm. they lose their position? Like, it, it becomes just a whole mess. Yeah, well, that would no. be a feels bad moment. <laughs> Yeah, that feels would be like really a, a feels bad Pepe, Pepe Le Pew uh, kind of moment there. Hey, you know what? Ian, yeah, go ahead. I yeah. think the assassination could work is during an actual node or castle siege. Like yes. if somebody manages to get in and kill the mayor during the siege, then mm -hmm. that could be like a win condition. But just in general, no. Yeah, during a siege, if you or you know what, could it... Uh, Anytime that works, but like I take back what I said about assassinations, it would that would work during a castle siege. If it's during the the, the kind of war, the castle siege period, when the siege actually starts and everyone's ready at the designated time, then if mm -hmm. the king dies or something, mm -hmm. uh, then they can be consequences and stuff like that. But they are like I don't think they should add it anyway because they already have set criteria for winning a castle siege, mm. and like if they also add, uh, if they also add the the whole uh, assassination thing to those criteria, like either you take the central tower and the crystal or you kill the king. Yeah, one is going to be easier than the other if you use a if you use a zerg. And then you just lost the whole, like, you just lost, lost the whole point of making Castle Siege is not necessarily Zergable. Nah, it's not, so, baby. Well, it's all natural, baby. 
Also, yes, I'm talking about Tywin Lannister getting shot in the oh. wall and taking a big poop. Oh, man, let's dude. not go into that. <laughs> oh, harsh times, man. Dude, oh, dude, we've got to get this together for... I'm, I did say we're going to try to wind this one down. I, I want to go into some of the points from yesterday and today. I really do. There were some discussion okay. points around corruption that I want to talk about. Uh, around uh, There was actually... Uh, one of the other community members yesterday, I think it was, that actually posted something for me. Uh, we got some people working on some of the uh, the discussion points from both. We're going to go through, take a look at any of the new information specifically. Uh, that was, you know, something that was either more elaborated on. There was one around the certificates, as they call certificates, and that tying into like harvested resources that you gathered that you might have on hand. Um, so definitely want to talk about that. And then here's the good thing. So Woodchip had actually brought up a point that was also on the Golden Feather a couple weeks ago, talking about open world kind of PvP and stuff like that, how it fits into lore. This is actually going to be a good tie-in, talking about certificates a bit and PKing and corruption a bit. So I think we're going to kind of tie some of that together next time. But we're going to go through and talk about any of the newer information that was gathered there. Also, feel free to share your thoughts Anything you'd like to see us discuss a little bit more here on the show, um, you can do that in Discord, on the show Twitter, uh, or or just DM me or, or whatever, man. Shoot it to us any way you'd like to. There was also discussion around kind of the combat tree a bit um, and some of the proccing and everything there with the weapons I want to talk about. There was a lot of really good stuff. I want to make sure we've got an accurate full list put together by the next show. And also, I don't know if you know this, it's been freaking warm here with the high heat index. So Sim can only handle so much of the heat, right? Yeah. In spite of like the fact that I'm the light bringer, <laughs> yeah. uh, the truth is that uh, I am very hot natured. I mean, you're like your paladin. Yeah, you main. are. You're not supposed to be wielding loads of fire. So yeah, that's a good point. But, you know, I need my air conditioning. So we're going to get to that so soon. Seriously, everybody, you guys really really appreciate all that support i'm a, i've got a lot of work this week to do on the website to actually i've got i've just got a lot to do steven kind of i feel like he fast tracked me a bit kind of forced me to fast track a bit <laughs> to play catch up because of <laughs> something He's like all right it's that time of the year guys we gotta we gotta Jeez. put our content creators to the test <laughs> yeah let me just talk to a hundred thousand people in two days and I do. I feel like he kind of like some of what he's done is kind of I feel like pushed me to make this happen sooner. So yeah. basically, like, um, as as this is happening, yeah. just the, the light beaming out of your head just intensifies. Yeah, I've got to get it pointed in the right direction. Now it's not just yeah, it isn't just a glowing aura anymore. It's a damn beam of light coming right out my five head. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. <laughs> Friends, it's been a it's been a great time. Seriously, thanks for all the love, all the support, and everything. I, I know that I appreciate it. And I'm sure that these guys do too. Uh, keep in mind, you know, if you are listening to this show on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, wherever it's at, if you are wa watching this on YouTube later, or or you catch it here live, if you contribute in any way, or you're just here to participate and kind of be a part of the show, l watching it, listening to it, contributing to it. Keep in mind, you all are Pathfinders too. We're all just the Pathfinders here on this round table. It's always open to other community members who want to share, you know, and if you don't feel up to it, you can contribute in any other way, you know, whether it's here in, in chat, on Discord, do conversation in the forums, anywhere. If you contribute, you're part of this. You also are carrying the torch for Ash as a creation. Yeah. Basil's not here, but he's sinking, so it's about that time, friends. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? It's that time that we usually end the stream, and now he's in chat just stating, yeah. just, <laughs> just telling us, guys, I'm getting really low on my in front of my computer. <laughs> so it's uh, time you end the stream, cut it out. Yeah, so I appreciate everybody who follows and contributes here, but please don't forget to also go and check out all of the other Pathfinders here on the show. Check out their content. Speaking of which, gentlemen, please... Let them know your domains, where you reign, and where they can find you. Daedalus. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, at the Ashen Herald, and on YouTube, youtube.com slash C slash Ashen Herald. And uh, Pasha. 
For me, you can find me uh, on Twitch. It's at Pasha TV. I stream every Friday and Sunday. Uh, I play a lot of different games. Still trying to uh, to uh, be patient for new MMOs that kind of, that are in development, such as MMOs that got, that are getting delayed every thirty days. Uh, other than that, you can find me on Twitter and Discord. It's uh, at TV Pasha on Twitter and on Discord. It's just uh, Pasha on uh, Sims Discord. You can find me there. Yeah. And Wandering Mist. You can find me on my YouTube channel, which is Wandering Mist. And I am very active on the Ashes official mm -hmm. forums and the Ashes official Discord by the same name. If you're on the Discord and you want to fast track to where my YouTube channel is, just right click my name, click profile, and it is linked on there. I think that goes for any of us as well. Look at this yeah. mad lad promoting all of us in his last line of oh. self promo he's amazing isn't he <laughs> i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna say anything else i am just gonna let i'm not gonna i'm not gonna let you all uh i just want to make sure everybody's aware like this week i usually i've got this thing where i stream every day of the week for the whole year this year um my streams are going to be very short this week because i've got to really put a lot of time in on the website right now and kind of preparing you're going to see a different scene here next week like this is all gonna look very different in visual presentation for the show it's actually gonna be really cool so i'm pretty stoked about it so that's gonna look different uh the website's gonna look a lot different i'm gonna be posting in the ashes uh pathfinder or ashes of creation area in the discord just so if you all want to like kind of interact and check out some of the pages as i finish them this week you can kind of give me some feedback um i've already gotten a lot of good feedback from everybody but yeah Thanks so much, everybody. Much love. Seriously, go check these guys out. We will see you here next Sunday, 5 p.m. CDT. Same Crusader. Uh, Pathfinder time. Pathfinder place. Everybody have a great week. Much love. See you, see you next week. Bye, everyone. See you, everyone. Bye.